Everybody, welcome back. My name is Yumble, and today I'd like to show you how I approach creating a road layout in City Skylines. Here we have an area of the map High Lake Point. It is uh, rather flat and empty with a great river running through it. You'll also see that I've added a couple service interchanges coming off the highway. So we've got a couple single point urban interchanges to bring traffic into our road layout. Uh, this is also gonna touch on transit a little bit as there's going to be a train station but mainly our focus here is road hierarchy and kind of awareness of our intersections and connections and general connectivity of the whole area uh, i'm also going to be using some pretty advanced drafting software on this one uh, to kind of imagine the the layout before we actually construct it so please be patient with me i'm, I'm very new to this uh, advanced drafting software but i'm hoping we can all learn how to work it by the end everyone sit back relax Enjoy the layout. And here we are inside of the drafting program. It is called Paint. So feel free to check that out if you'd like. Uh, but this is the layout. This is the tentative layout that I have for this area. Uh, all of the different colors denote a different type of road in road hierarchy. So starting at the top would be highway. So the already existing highway uh, at the top of the screen represents the highway. Black is arterial, which will always connect to the highway. Orange are collector roads, and blue are local roads. So going from largest at the highway to the smallest at the local size. Let me show you how I approached this and achieved this result. I always find it's best to decide where connections are going to go before beginning. So I've solidified ridges is what these are. So these, these black arterials, all of them are gonna be considered arterials, I think for this, uh, but that gives me a point to aim towards and think about when we're starting from the highway. I, I don't get much joy out of just building and meandering and seeing where it goes. I think roads are generally built to go somewhere in the real world, so I'd rather know where that place is and then formulate a plan on, on and a story about how it got there. Here are the completed arterial and collector roads. You can see how knowing where the bridges were to begin with influenced my decisions on how the arterials were going to work. So you can see that there's pretty direct connections between the bridges all the way back to the highways. So I like that a lot. Uh, collectors are of course the next step down in road hierarchy. So traffic will be coming off of the arterial onto the collector to get to the local roads. So these connections are going in between the major arterial uh, intersections, right? So these will always connect to the uh, to the arterial and never to the highway. This is actually an overpass going over the highway. Uh, this one will be an underpass. So I'm assuming that this area kind of in the northwest will be populated uh, later in the build. And here is the completed design with local roads included. You'll notice that generally we want local roads to connect to the collector roads. But I've also broken that rule in a bunch of key places. So the places where the, the blue crosses black. That is actually going to be restricted in one way or another. Usually I would say that that's a breach of road hierarchy. But in this case, I'm treating this side street as a right-hand turn for this traffic. And the left turn will be restricted. Uh, there's a few different ways to do that. I do have arterial roads that have either a, a solid median that will stop traffic from going left or I'll use what's called a, an R-cut, an R-C-U-T, or Restricted Crossing U-Turn, which may allow lefts coming off of the main road, but will disallow lefts coming off of the local roads. So keep that in mind. I've, I've done that very carefully. Um, and also the train station, of course. So we'll, we'll link that up as well using a series of underpasses and maybe some at-grade crossings as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, but I'd like to go back into City Skylines and try to build this in the game and we'll see how it works. Okay, so far so good. I've got four of the bridges in place. 
Um, I just want to show you part of my logic when deciding exactly where things should go based on based on what I've already created in the layout. I've got this pulled up on my second monitor, and you can see across the, the bottom here, this bridge connection and this bridge connection depend on where this left uh, arterial, this leftmost north-south arterial, and this bridge connection meet. So I'm actually going to make that connection happen so I can then uh, create that bridge accurately rather than, than guessing. So I know that this was a virtually a straight road when it comes down to it, so I'm just going to go all the way down a little too far probably. Connect this one straight to that. So now I've got this sort of anchor point that I know is the right point, so I'm going to go to the edge of, edge of the water with that. It's angled slightly to the left in my example image, so I'm going to do that. And we're crossing the river. There it is. Um, so I'm going to continue the arterial network. Actually, I think we can do the same thing over here based on my based on my chart. So let's imagine that this comes down. This is actually not going to hit quite where I want it to, I don't suppose. So I'm going to move this slightly so that it so that it uh, comes up in a more favorable spot. So I'm using move it here to move it to the right a little bit to match the image that I can see on my display. And let's see if this connection happens a little further north now. Much better. Ooh, I'm going to turn off uh, road bending as well because I know that this is just going to be a straight connecting, a straight connection and little anarchy is in order as well. There we go. I'm going to finish the arterial network and we'll see how it looks. I'd say that's pretty good. If you look at the black lines of the arterial roads on the right side, compare that to the to the shape that we've got here with the bridges and the arteries and the uh, the interchanges and everything. I, th I think I've essentially nailed it. Uh, let's move on and we'll do some collectors. The roads that I've been using thus far have all been six lane median roads. I'm actually going to go down to a four lane with grass median so that we can visually uh, distinguish, but also because that's what I want to do. The cool thing about this road pack is that we actually have asymmetrical options as well. So maybe I'll be, even be able to set up some intersections later, who knows? Uh, so the first thing that I really notice when comparing this to my, to my diagram is that there's a connection that comes across the top of this whole field here. And it looks like it's symmetrical, I think was my plan. I think I want it to be about here. And then let's actually measure from this. This will be a better, a better way to do it. I'm going to measure from this. I know I want it to be parallel, give or take. And I want to uh, split this area in half, pretty much. Maybe a little lower than that. Yeah. Yep, that looks like it's about it. And we'll go to the right side here. And that is great because it gives us uh, plenty of space in between here and the interchange. You want to have a bit of space between your uh, the exits from your interchange and your first collector. So I would I recommend leaving a couple segments of space in there. Uh, looking good. I'm going to get rid of this. That was just for... Uh, that was just for measuring. And the next thing that I really see is a diagonal that kind of goes straight. It starts at a bridge here. So let's imagine a bridge that goes over the highway. And I'm just going to use anarchy and just go right through the whole thing. Uh, but it ends down here. So I've got this funny little triangle shape in the original layout. And I think we'll be able to make a cool intersection out of that later. Maybe right there. Let's see if that adds up. I'm going to compare it to my... Uh, compare it to what we... <laughs> to what we already drew. Perfect. Looks good to me. I'm just looking to make sure that different areas seem to be about the same size as the idea so that all the lines work out in the long run. But that seems to be... seems to be good to me. Um, so we can actually use... Uh, what's it called? Network multi-tool here. If you want to get a little wild. 
and get some cool connections in here. So we're going to connect this road to this road. We are not. We are going to use a network multi-tool to actually subtract a couple nodes. So this, this tool does a bunch of cool stuff. I've got a tutorial about it, if you're curious, of, of some other features. But you can use it to consolidate roads together and kind of just make them connect. Just make it happen. Uh, we can do that up here also. So let's see. Can I subtract a node or two? Here, we can actually... Uh, let's just connect them and then subtract the nodes. That should work fine. And then the minus button. Get rid of those. Close nodes are not your friend, so make sure to, to get rid of them if necessary. Uh, these can be combined, of course. They can't, so we actually have to remove the node once again. So we'll get rid of this one. There we go. And this is actually a bridge. Here's a here's a way to do it. Uh, maybe I will delete the last segment. In fact, I'm going to delete this all the way back to the intersection there. And we're going to get this same network back. And I'm just going to measure how far it is to this to this highway here. I know that I'm going to want it high by about this point here. How high exactly? I'm not sure. Maybe maybe 10 meters high, something like that. Right there. So I'm going to go up to 10 meters. I'll change that later if necessary. And we'll cross the highway. It is nowhere near 10 meters higher than the highway, but that's okay. I can adjust everything. I might even end up lowering the highway for this. I will do 12 units long over the top, and then maybe another 12 units down. How, how far on this side? Nine units, that is not far enough. So I'm going to cut that there, and we are going to make this a true 12 unit overpass. Same on this side. I'll figure out the details later. Uh, right now it's mainly about sketching, uh, sketching out the layout of the whole thing. So that's a pretty major road. Um, all of these continuous medians and such, I'll adjust those out later. Don't worry about that. As I said just a moment ago, it's all about the sketch. Um, so same sort of thing. There's a there's a crossing that happens here. So I'm going to make that happen right now. And it looks to be about midway between uh, these two intersections on the arterial. So I like that. It's probably just about there. And it crosses to about midway on this on this right side here. I think it's supposed to be parallel to this road, but I'm, I'm actually not gonna make it perfectly parallel. This one, I respected the parallel, <laughs> but this time I'm not going to. It's okay. I think if you, if you look at Google Earth or Google Maps, you'll find that most city layouts are not perfectly parallel. Over time, uh, things shift, things change, decisions have to be made, stuff gets torn down. City building is wild. Let's see if we can consolidate these. We can, that's wonderful. I'll get rid of these short nodes also, so I don't forget later. Network multi-tool is a lifesaver. Mm, looks great. Uh, this actually continues on and then reconnects up here somewhere. Let's see exactly where that might happen. looks like this goes a bit further to about uh, midway to the shore. I don't have a purpose for this just yet, but maybe I will later. Or maybe it'll maybe it'll change entirely, I don't know. A sketch is just that. It's just a it's just a sketch. I'm just going to go up to about here and then connect this one because I've got this going down to this. Making a bit of a funny shape. Uh, this road actually continues on past the train tracks. I'll probably end up making an over or uh, underpass there later, potentially. We'll do that, and let's consolidate these. This is uh, this is possible in vanilla as well. Here's the actually let me show you. Here's the vanilla way of doing this. If you haven't already guessed, ta-da! <laughs> totally doable. Once again, right here, get rid of the existing. Uh, existing roads, connect it, 
There it is. I wonder, can I fix these by going to the other one? It might be this second one here. Yes, this is the one that would get rid of those. Yep, that'll work. Well, I'll fix that later. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go around to every single uh, every single road and upgrade it to this version that doesn't have continuous median. But it's gonna look great by the end, I promise. Uh-oh. Well, we'll see. I'll fix it later. Uh, anyway, moving on. Collectors, collectors. Collectors and connectors. Uh, this one ends up going down to the left a little ways. Does not have to be exact, but it does look like it was meant to be parallel, so I'm going to leave that 90 there. And it goes almost to the shoreline, but not quite. Almost, but not quite. That looks good to me. Now, I think the most complex part of this whole thing is this little uh, shoreline area. I use some curved roads, which is actually, you'll, the, the keen eye amongst you will notice that the uh, none of these roads are curved, which is somewhat alarming to some of you, I'm sure, but I'm actually not that worried about it. It suits my needs, I'll put it that way. Uh, so coming off this, we will go right a little bit, we'll go left a little bit, just to there. We'll probably go straight along this. I think that this is meant to mimic the curvature of the of the coast, or the, uh, not the coast, the river, rather. <laughs> and then a quick right turn up to, up to this area here. Like that and it might I'm just gonna come off this angular actually because I think it's still meant to sort of mimic the mimic the river there so I will respect that I will respect my design Oops. just about there and I'm gonna connect this guy to that because that's where it goes and I know that this one just kind of goes around the corner. Uh, once again, there's going to be pillars here. Well, actually, if I'm real clever, I might just miss those pillars. Let's, let's see if it happens to work out. Looking good, and it seems to continue around. I'll fix that later. Perfect. That is right where it needs to be. Excellent. I think that can... Nope, there's one more connection. I lied. One more... One more collector. This one basically goes straight to here, I think. So let's do that. Love it. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to clean this up a bit, and then we'll do some local roads. So throughout this project, which, by the way, I've never done it this way before in my life, but let me just say that I'm going to continue doing it this way because MS Paint is awesome, and uh, designing without looking at the actual roads has helped me immensely. Um, I just want to show you a trick that I do when I know that I want roads to be parallel. There, there might be a mod that does this, or there might be a better way to do this or something, but what I've done here is I've measured out thirds. I know that I want this road broken up into thirds. I've already done the trick on this road. Basically, I knew that I wanted it to be parallel here, and I knew that I wanted this road to be split up into thirds. So I'm, I'm not great at math, but like this is, uh, <laughs> I, I, I figured I'd share this trick with you anyway. So I've already got it broken up into thirds. I know that I want this next road to be parallel to this one, much like how this one is to this arterial over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these guidelines and I'm just going to make a, a landing point and I am going to use precision engineering. So if you have them on precision engineering and you hold alt, I, th I assume that's the mod that does it, but look, I've got the 90 there, and that's an approximate 90, so it's still probably going to break the grid in places, but it works for my purposes. So that gives me the angle that I need, and then all I got to do is connect the roads. Just figured I'd show you that, uh, that neat little trick. The local road network is actually almost done. I'm 
now on to the train station. So let's see how this goes. It's it's quite different from my original sketch, but that's but that's okay. Uh, as I said before, some of these are going to be at grade, and some of them are going to be underpasses. So that one's going to be at grade. I'm okay with that, um, unless I have to change it later. We'll see what happens. Uh, but for this one, for this major road, I think we're gonna we're gonna put the train under it. So I'm actually going to put this down to maybe negative. Ooh, I want to keep it grounded. No tunnel for me. Tunnels are expensive. Um, but I'm gonna take it down to about negative eight, perhaps. Some adjustment may be required later, but we'll start with that. And we're going under. I think we'll go under that road. I think we'll go under that road as well, because I don't want to make too awkward of a connection there. And we're basically at the end where it's going to have to connect. So let's say that's the end of the underpass. I'll figure all that out in a second. And then we have to go back to ground level, and this one's going to have an at-grade connection. Meaning it's going to have a rail crossing. You can see, when I say at grade, I mean a rail crossing like that, where the bars go down to stop vehicles. And eyeballing it, there's there's something about this corner that I'm going to end up using. So just about to there, perhaps. I'll try that. And I'm going to use uh, network multi-tool again to get this at grade crossing up and running I think I haven't actually tried it let's let's see how this works Ooh. Uh, let me remove a node from the train track because I think that's what's stopping us now let's see if this works it does <laughs> excellent 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 that's cool uh, so now, the other part of the rail interchange, we want it to be uh, bi-directional. So we want trains to be able to enter and exit this way, as well as this way over here. So I'm going to use about, let's see if 15, a 15-unit 15 curve can do it. Maybe it ends about there, but a little further. Let's go, let's go 20 unit, uh, sorry, 20 degree curve and see if that gives us a more favorable angle. There we go. And I'm going to opt to remove that bridge node, I think, or let me look at this overall. Yeah, I think so. I think we got it. Um, I may even, no, that's good actually. That's good. Let's remove that bridge end node, my God. Let's elevate this, or let's uh, bridge this one using fine road tools. That'll work for me. Very cool. Uh, so to complete this, the underpasses, or the um, these pieces are going to need to be bridged. So using fine road tools again, elevate the necessary pieces. We're going to elevate the local road. Very interesting. I might add uh, walls to this or something also. And we're going to elevate this one. That'll require a bit of adjustment later. I might extend the bridge to, to here. Um, another cool thing to do is to slope, slope this. You can do it using Move It, or you can do it using Network Multi-Tool. It's whatever you want. Network Multi-Tool looks like this. Hit Enter. Beautiful. So now we'll have trains coming in fairly cleanly and somewhat unobtrusively. The one thing I'm worried about is this. I might figure out a different solution later, but uh, that matches up with my diagram uh, well enough, so I'm happy with that. There we go. I think that's a pretty good representation of what I originally drew in paint. Not too bad for the first time trying this. Uh, things to note. I'm gonna end up upgrading a bunch of roads to, uh, to be asymmetrical as well, uh, with the perform median, stuff like that. And case in point, you remember what I said about uh, traffic permeability or lack thereof? These intersections will require a bit of traffic manager, right? There's no left there. So I, I want vehicles to respect the median here. Um, so I'll be, I'll be going around fixing lane arrows to accomplish that. 
uh, what else? Same sort of deal here, right? This is one of our arterial roads that goes right through the middle. Contextually, I don't know that it's totally different from this one, other than there's probably going to be more traffic in this area. So I don't want cars to use the local road system to, to cross the arterial, because that's kind of dangerous. Uh, you can probably get away with it on the collector roads. So you can see the green situation here, a mix of asymmetrical and two lane road. Like this situation you can get away with. That one they can come up through, but I don't really want them breaking this one. So same deal, same exact deal. Get rid of the left turn there. Get rid of the left turn and the straight through there. Get rid of the left and left and straight. So then the uh, the median is now functional, whereas before it was just a visual trick. Now it's actually vehicles will will respect the fact that that is not crossable. But yeah, overall it's really good. I think this area is going to be a lot of fun to to play with. I'm glad that I made this kind of shape here because um, that lends itself to maybe a park or some sort of transit hub or a, a metro situation or trams or buses or any number of things. But overall, I'd say it's a really cool project. The, the big takeaway is know where your roads are coming from and have an idea of where they're going and then sketch out based on that. Um, I think it, it gave me a lot of clarity to know where, uh, where traffic was going to originate and end up and how tr uh, transit might be implemented. It helped to know that from the very beginning. Uh, so be sure to use uh, good planning in your cities. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, this one was a blast to make, actually. I'm going to do probably my, my Twitch city. This might actually become the Twitch city. Now that I see it, I'm very happy with the result. Uh, can't wait to zone it in and put some buildings in and get some traffic running through it. So feel free to check me out on Twitch. I stream two days a week. Uh, subscribe here, of course, if you're looking for more uh, City Skylines tutorials, etc., uh, we also have a Discord. Feel free to join up on the Discord if you'd like. A lot of great discussion goes on in there. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.